Obesity costs this country about $150 billion a year, or almost 10% of the national medical budget. Approximately one in three adults and one in six children are obese. Obesity is epidemic in the United States and a major cause of death attributable to heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Welcome to our e-lecture about nudging. I'm Tom and together with Stefan and Charlotte we made this e-lecture, so you will hear them later in this e-lecture. And I will first start with the article itself. It's by Chung and its colleagues. It's called Queuing Healthier Alternatives for Takeaway. So let's start with the background and the theory of this article. First of all, it's important to know what is nudging. The definition Chung and colleagues give is any aspect of the choice architecture that alters people's, people's behavior in a predictable way without forbidding any options or significantly changing their economic incentives. So we hope to change some people's behavior with the nudges. And that's also what happens in this article. So here you see an example, maybe, especially if you live in the Netherlands, you, rec you will recognize this. It's a sign you see um, when you're driving in a car and when you're driving the right speed, then you get a happy face. But when you're driving uh, very, very fast, then you see a sad face. So the notch in this one is that the happy face will hopefully turn you to drive slowly and safely instead of driving too way too fast. So that's an example of a notch, which you see in daily life. And then the article, yeah, it's about nudging healthy behavior, but what is important about healthy behavior? Why is that important? Um, it's very important because there's an urgent need to counter unhealthy eating um, because the unhealthy eating is causing financial strain and death. So there are two, yeah, two problematic situations caused by unhealthy eating. And yeah, we learned, or this article, article learned us that we make food choices without awareness. So mostly we do it on, it's like a habit. So we just take the easy food choice and yeah, if that's, if that's fast food, then we just take the fast food. So that's unhealthy and it causes, as you can see, obes uh, obesity as a global epidemic and also causes financial strain. So people have a lot of stress about their finances and yeah, this makes them less happy in their, in their life. Um, and also what is important about this nudging, uh, the nudging of healthy behavior is in this way, uh, we are not doing information based studies uh, because information based studies uh, tend to be, tend not to be very effective in changing behavior. And so this article hopes with nudging. So yeah, putting theory into practice, uh, hopes to change the behavior, which was not accomplished by the information based studies. And um, yeah, another important theory or part of the theory of this article is the system one PS system two. And yeah, it actually says you have two different systems in your brain. And the first system is unconscious, fast and automatic mode. And second system is slow, conscious and deliberative. So that means uh, choosing food, we mostly do in an in a unconscious, fast and automatic mode. So we, like I said before, we just use our habits to get yeah, to make food choices. and. If you, have bad, if you have bad food habits, then yeah, you're most likely to eat very unhealthy. So this article wants to change those automatic responses by yeah, creating healthy nudges. And one bonus tip for you guys is really read this book, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. It has been yeah, said before maybe, but I also am reading it myself and I really, yeah, you, you will read everything about system one and system two in that book. And yeah, way more. I think it's a great way to develop yourselves more. So what are the three notches of this article? There are three, as I said, and one is the accessibility notch, which means they made the food more accessible. So uh, it was more visible and easier to reach. Uh, the second notch is the science notch, which is about the looks of the notch. So does it look attractive and yeah, appealing to eat? And the third notch is the social proof notch. And here, um, yeah, we will, uh, the article investigates if more people will buy a certain, certain healthy product, if it's uh, 
called a bestseller or something like that. So they see more people buy it. And yeah, the question is, will they follow the other people? So the hypothesis and the goal of the article is, uh, yeah, first the hypothesis is that all three notches will increase the sales, the sales of targeted healthy op options. Um, and then the goal, the goal is testing the hypothesis, of course, and also answering an underexplored research question by investigation, investigating whether notching effects are robust when their purpose is disclosed. So they will say um, that they are busy with a notch, so people are aware of that. And yeah, will this influence influence the results? That's what they will test as well. Okay, and then we can now go on to the method and the design. So Stefan will take over my talk. Now we will talk about the method and the design of the study. This study took place during a seven week period uh, in a takeaway food vendor in a hospital in the Netherlands. Uh, they sold snacks, hot and cold drinks and small meal items. The participants of the study were all of the paying customers during that seven week period, which logically consisted mostly of hospital personnel. The first week was used to create a baseline, so no nudges were used. The fruit was placed behind the counter, out of the customer's reach, and the healthy and unhealthy bread rolls were placed in one container. The labels of the three yogurt options were placed flat on the counter, which meant that the customer had to approach the counter to see the label. In week two, all three nudges were implemented simultaneously. Every nudge promoted a different healthy food choice. First, the accessibility nudge. For the accessibility nudge, the fruits were placed on the counter instead of behind, so they are more accessible for the customer. Then, the salience nudge, where the healthy and unhealthy bread rolls were separated, and the healthy bread rolls were decorated with checkered cloth and a picture of a wheat field to make them more visually salient. Then, the social proof nudge. The social proof notch was implemented by adding pictures to emphasize the different sorts of yogurt and also by placing the labels on the wall in clear view and adding the line best selling choice. In week 3, 4, 5 and 6, the three nudges were simultaneously removed because of possible carryover effects from the nudges. In week 7, the nudges were re-implemented simultaneously but this time with a disclosure slogan added, which conveyed the purpose of the nudge. The slogan read, we help you make healthy choices. And now the results of this seven week field experiment. We will start with the accessibility nudge. Uh, during the first week, 90 pieces of fruit were sold. In week two, where the accessibility nudge was implemented, this amount increased to 156, which is an increase of 73.3%. During week 7, the nudge and disclosure week, the amount increased again, this time to 164 pieces of sold fruit, which is a 5.1% increase compared to week 2. And now the salience nudge during week 1. 291 healthy bread rolls were sold. In week 2, this amount increased to 318, which is a 9.3% increase. During week 7, again the nudge and disclosure week, 327 healthy bread rolls were sold, which means a 2.4% increase compared to week 2. The acquired data was processed by using a chi squared test. First, we'll talk about the accessibility nudge again. The sales of fruit was compared to unhealthy snacks, cookies, energy bars and sweets because they were the competition for the fruits at the counter. In the chi-square test, specific pairwise comparisons were made to examine the data. They found that the proportion of fruit to confectionery sales in the nudge week was significantly different from the proportion in the baseline week. The same goes for the proportion of fruit to confectionaries when comparing the nudge plus disclosure week and the baseline week. But the nudge week proportion was not significantly different from the nudge plus disclosure week. So relative 
to the unhealthy confectionaries, the accessibility nudge was effective in promoting fruit. For the salience nudge, comparisons were made between unhealthy bread rolls and healthy bread rolls at the counter. The chi-square test did not find any significant differences in proportions of healthy bread rolls compared to unhealthy bread rolls between the baseline, nudge, and nudge in disclosure week. Then, at last, the social proof nudge. The effects of the social proof nudge on the sales of yogurt shakes could not be measured with a statistical analysis because in week 1, 2 and 7, the amount of yogurt shakes sold were 7, 6 and 8 respectively. This was too low to examine the data with a chi-squared test. So now I'm going to talk about the discussion of these results. First, the link to the research questions. Hypothesis 1 said that all of the three nudges, so the accessibility nudge, the social proof nudge, and the salience nudge, would increase the sales of the healthy food options at the vendor. However, only the accessibility nudge significantly increased the sale of the healthy food options. The other two nudges were either too little data to even analyze it for the social proof nudge, or for the salience nudge, relatively increased food sales, healthy food sales, but no significant results. Hypothesis two was about transparency. So it was hypothesized that disclosing that the nudge was there would have an influence on the effect of the nudge. However, it was found that there was in fact no reactance effect. So disclosing the nudge did not influence consumers' behavior as affected by the nudge. When linking this to the existing literature, we can see that the accessibility nudges effectiveness is actually consistent with previous research. So it has been found that facilitating access to, even physical access to healthy food choices can increase the consumption of these choices. There was an insignificant effect of the salience nudge, which is actually contradictory to what has been found previously. However, previous research gives a possible answer to this. So because people buy bread frequently and also have been buying bread probably for a longer time, they may have existing preferences and habits for their bread purchase, which override or just were stronger than the nudge this influence. There was no effect of disclosure on nudge effectiveness, which is also in line with previous research, although there hasn't been a lot of previous research on this. So another study also found that being transparent with the purpose of an accessibility nudge actually didn't affect its effectiveness at all. So the implications of these findings are that not only does do nudges affect consumers' behavior in lab studies and in very controlled settings, but also in real-life applications. So here real-life consumers were recorded in a real-life vendor and still nudges had an effect. There may be a spillover effect, so even when the fruit was removed to back to its old place, um, consumers still bought more fruit than previously, so this may be an effect of nudges that persists even when, it, when the nudge isn't there anymore. Finally, there was no reactance effect to the disclosure. So because we have discussed ethical concerns about nudges and whether it's ethical to affect and influence consumers' behavior without their knowledge. However, because disclosure didn't really have an effect on the effectiveness of the nudge, maybe this is a possible solution for ethical concerns as you can simply tell consumers that the nudge is there and they may still behave in the way that you would want them to. So, do you think that this may be an ethical, long-lasting intervention for healthy consumption? The findings of the study may suggest so. Finally, the limitations of the study include that all nudges were implemented at the same time. So, for additive or interfering effects, this study was not controlling. Maybe the social proof nudge actually increased the 
effectiveness of the uh, accessibility nudge or the other way around and um, or maybe one even hindered the effect of the other so this is a limitation because this was not actually researched furthermore the spillover effect that i talked about previously needs a lot more investigation because there could be possible confounding variables that were not controlled for it is an interesting prospect but you can't make any conclusion without further research. Finally, with the transparency, the researchers only presented a poster stating the intended purpose of the nudge. They didn't specifically say, oh, this is a nudge. So disclosing that the nudge is present might actually have differential effects and also needs to be further studied. Yeah. In conclusion, further research is needed, although these findings are exciting. Finally, our conclusion and takeaway message. So system one, fast and conscious and automatic processes don't necessarily have to lead to unhealthy choices. Nudges are an easy to implement and low cost intervention that can actually push people towards healthier choices. They may even be robust, so not be affected by transparency. So maybe there's a way to implement them in, an, in a completely ethical way. And finally, because a lot of people now eat out and consume a lot of their meals not at home, this gives, gives a lot of space to implement nudges that can act, actually lead to healthier eating environments. So what you can take home is with nudges, maybe people will start eating more fruit than burgers. Thank you for your attention. Welcome to our presentation, nudging at the checkout counter. <laughs> okay, I need to start over. I will get this bit out because um, I need to click here. Yes, okay. Welcome at our presentation, Nudging at the Check-On Counter. Welcome to today's lecture. We are talking about nudging behavior. Imagine a familiar situation to most of us. You are standing in a store in a train station because you want to buy something as you travel by train. A coffee, tea, a snack, or something to eat. As you order your coffee or tea, you can observe that in front of the counter there's a shelf. In this specific shelf, there are fruits such as bananas, apples, grapes, and, and also chocolate bars, potato crisps, and such. Take a second and think what you would order in this instance. Would it be something healthy, such as a banana, or would it be the chocolate bar? What you order is irrelevant to this question, but this is just to offer you a glimpse into nudging. You may think that your choices are based solely on your internal states. However, as you think that you would like to have a coffee and a snacker bar, you might reconsider to have a fruit instead, uh, as you see the shelf with the fruits near the counter. Your internal state has been influenced indirectly by the fact that there are healthy options near the counter. After all, your decisions are not solely yours, are they? They might be a result of a subtle nudging technique that was provided in the shop. But nudge, what are we talking about? Nudge is a concept in behavioral economics, po political theory and behavioral science, which proposes positive reinforcement and indirect suggestions as a way to influence the behavior and decision-making of groups or individuals. In the words of Thaler, a nudge, as we will use the term, is any aspect of the choice architecture that alters people's behavior in a predictable way without forbidding any options or significantly changing their economic incentives. To count as a mere nudge, the intervention must be easy and cheap to avoid. Nudges are not mandates. Putting a fruit at eye level counts as a nudge. Banning junk food does not count. Several examples of nudging techniques are shown in the following pictures. Like, this one is pretty clear to all of us, right? Please stop using plastic bags or you will kill turtles. 
A golf hole painted onto the ceramic of a urinal in a man's public toilet at Schiphol Airport. This is a fun way to reduce cigarette litter on the streets. A stairway at the hospital that shows how much calories you burn climbing each step. My colleagues Bakten, Laura and myself, Esther, will introduce and talk about a study that evidentiated this nudging behavior in a well-known Dutch kiosk-like shop in the train stations. Thank you, Esther. I'll be continuing with describing the context of the study, the theoretical framework and the research questions. The current study aimed to investigate whether repositioning food by using a nudge leads to a healthier choice of foods in the shop. The paper offers a glimpse into understanding consumer behavior by investigating whether a food repositioning nudge would have a positive effect on people's behavior and whether this would influence their preferred choices with regards to consumer behavior in the future. Normally, unhealthy choices of foods were presented at the checkout counter in the shop. However, for the sole purpose of the study, these unhealthy food choices were switched with healthy food alternatives by the counter. To ensure that both choices were made available to customers, and healthy food alternatives were also present in the shop, however, not by the checkout counter. The current study of Van Hestel is a replication of Cruz's study from 2016, in which a food repositioning nudge was investigated at a checkout counter in a shop. Compared to the previous study by Cruze, this paper further investigated the food repositioning nudge effect. The previous study by Cruze had some limitations, especially given the fact that it lasted only one week. Therefore, Van Hestel aimed to investigate this effect for a longer period of time, more specifically for about eight weeks, from which four weeks were used to infer the baseline levels and the latter four weeks to test the nudge effect. Another important addition compared to the previous study was the administration of exit interviews to customers in order to infer whether customers had a positive or a negative attitude towards the nudge itself. The study attempted to answer two distinct research questions. The first question aimed to, inv to investigate whether repositioning food by using a nudge leads to a healthier choice of products. While the second question further investigated whether this repositioning of food has a positive effect on the people's future consumer behavior regarding healthy products. My colleague Esther will further continue to describe the methods part of the paper. The study was run in one platform based kiosk at a train station in the Netherlands and had a longitudinal pre post design. During the baseline phase, products were arranged in their regular position. During the nudge phase, a selection of healthy products were placed onto two out of three counters, checkout counter displays, thus replacing a selection of unhealthy snacks, which still kept being available elsewhere in the same kiosk. Multiple healthy products were selected to be placed in the display. These included bananas, nuts, muesli bars, cereal biscuits, and crackers. These selected healthy foods products replaced unhealthy food products, such, a, such as chocolate bars and candy. The independent variable in the study was the total number of products sold per day. The main outcome variable was the proportion of selected healthy products sold per day as a function of the total number of food products sold per day. A subsample of 186 customers was recruited for the participation in an exit interview. The aim of the study was described and oral consent was given. Participants were asked what products they had just bought and were asked questions about these products and their intention to buy them. These questions were asked on a 10 point Likert scale. Year of birth and gender were also uh, asked as well as some background questions about he healthy eating, hunger and thirst, and frequency of buying something at the kiosk. Besides this, questions about the product arrangement and opinions on a nudge and nudges in general were asked and the briefing was given. 
An ANOVA with the experimental phases independent variable was performed for the total numbers of products sold per day. This analysis revealed a significant effect, which means that more products were sold during the baseline phase than the nudge phase. Besides this, more food products were sold during the baseline phase than during the nudge phase. Furthermore, analysis of the data found that the proportion of selected healthy food products was higher during the nudge phase than during the baseline phase. The proportion of healthy food products which were not replaced did not differ between the experimental phases. The overall proportion of replaced and non-replaced healthy food products relative to all food products sold was higher during the nudge phase than during the baseline phase. Altogether, these findings suggest that the proportional increase in select, selected healthy food products sold was not at the expense of other healthy food products. Here we can see the weekly sales data of the proportion of selected healthy food products as a function of the total number of food products sold. The error bars indicate the standard deviation. It is not hard to see that there was a larger proportion of the selected food products, which in this case are the healthy ones, sold in a nudge phase, those last four weeks, than in the baseline phase, the first four weeks. A result at the exit interview showed that more customers have bought at least one selected healthy food product during the nudge phase than during the baseline phase. Similarly, the average number of selected healthy food products was higher during the nudge phase than during the baseline phase. Customers who had bought a selected healthy food product during the nudge phase indicated they had hardly planned on buying these products. These results may point at the working mechanism of nudge that is assumed to appeal to automatic, impulsive decision making. Other interesting results were that out of 14 customers who did indicate to notice something different, only one specific noticed the change in the product arrangement. Most of the participants thought that the nudge could be helpful in making healthier choices, but a larger majority stated that it had not influenced their own choice. How these findings relate to theories and existing literatures will be discussed by my colleague Lara. Thank you, Esther. Uh, from the results, four main findings emerged. Uh, firstly, they found that the repositioning of healthy food products at the checkout counter display increased the sales of the healthy food products, which is in line with the results of the original study of Kruse et al. Secondly, they found that this effect remained over a period of four weeks. The proportion of selected healthy food products in total food sales was higher in all four nudge weeks than in all four baseline weeks, as Esther just said. This study answers calls of multiple sources for investigating the effect over a longer period of time and more conceptual replications investigating the effectiveness of nudging healthy food choices. Thirdly, the study found that analysis uh, on individual level purchase da data led to the same conclusion on the positive effect of the nudge. And lastly, the study confirmed that customers generally approve of the repositioning nudge and that it might improve the reputation of the complement company implementing the nudge, as told by Kruse et al. And uh, this, also, this information also brings uh, positive input into the ethical debate about acceptability of the nudges. Um, then uh, two limitations in the study were that there was no control group and uh, secondly, that the percentage of healthy food sales in absolute terms was rather small. However, it is a feasible solution that has a positive effect. Then uh, for future research, they recommended that they should focus on studying the combined potential of multiple nudges implemented simultaneously. And they also recommended economists to investigate the financial consequences of implementing the nudge because, uh, for example, they always need to display fresh fruit to make it appealing and that would not be very cost effective. So to conclude, this study strengthened the empirical evidence base of repositioning, repositioning healthy food products as an effective, sustainable and well accepted nudge. The possible implications of this study for consumer behavior more generally are that it gives us better insight in how people behave and consume when responding to input from outside sources to push them in a certain direction. 
And secondly, a possible implication for consumer behavior in general could be that people generally want to make good decisions as the nudge to watch healthier food products is well accepted. We would like to thank you for your time.